Good evening. Um, I feel a bit overcome, really, because this is like, you know when you go to other people's party, it's a lot of fun, but when it's your own party, there's too many people and you want to spend loads of time with all of them. There's so many great people here I would love to spend the whole evening with, but you don't get the chance to be that close. But thank you so much for all being here. And um, I hope this is going to be a, an evening of stereoscopic adventure, <laughs> the like of which you've never seen before. Um, I'd like to do some thank yous first. That's the first thing I should like to get out of the way because uh, this has only happened due to some people doing some great work. I want to say a very special thank you to the Stereo Club of Southern California. Because they have been our hosts here and they've uh, got all this system together. A big thank you to Eric Curlin, who's the most magnificent man in his life. The pictures that you see on the screen are things which we've retrieved from the past, and I have to thank my amazing uh, collaborator, Denis Pellerin, for restoring them. And, um, I want to thank my team, Melanie, who's made this happen, and she managed to invite you all. Amazing. Woo! Thank you, Melanie. And, um, and Jeanette, who's our distributor here, is here tonight. I'm very grateful to her. Um, I have to read notes for this because I don't want to forget anybody. Um, and Aline and Corey from the PR company, who have also been a great to this Special thank you to Oliver Dean also, who's an amazing, he's an, uh, a stereographer even more ancient than myself, <laughs> and, and much more venerable. Uh, Oliver is responsible for the exhibition. Please do visit the exhibition over the way before you go, if, you, if you're going to wait around for um, autographs or something. Um, but please have a look, because there's some amazing equipment there. Thank you, Oliver, for that. Amazing. <laughs> I want to thank Disney. Uh, some of the Disney folks are here. We love Disney. Do we love Disney? Yes! yes. Um, and they've been responsible for giving the use of this beautiful theatre, also this magnificent screen. And we have two state-of-the-art uh, laser projectors up here, uh, which give the most incredible images. Uh, we have two because it's stereo, okay, and it's unusual. <laughs> and we also have a, a great system which is, uh, which is, is seen in these, these spectacles. So this is something you won't find in the theatre. This is much better than the, the, uh, the IMAX system in many ways, and I will show you why later on. But the separation between these, uh, the left and right in this system is great. Please don't uh, put your fingers through the lenses. Um, resist the temptation, you know, to do that. Um, and please, can we have them back afterwards? Because we'll probably need to do another uh, exposition at some point, I hope. I think that's all my thank yous. Is that it? I think so, yeah. But thank you to everyone who, who made this possible for, for us to be here. I'm quite, as I say, overwhelmed because it's an amazing audience for me to be speaking to. And um, I'm selling my book. You know, I've come here to, to promote the book, but unashamedly so, because this represents work that I've done over the last 50 years or so. And it also represents stereoscopy, because in a sense, I and a few other people, a lot of other people here, are kind of evangelists for stereoscopy, because we love it and we think it's kind of underrepresented in the world. I mean, why would we, why would we be satisfied with flat pictures when we can have 3D pictures, right? <laughs> Okay, that's the end of my notes, and it becomes dangerous from this point. Um, <laughs> would you care to put on your spectacles right now, folks? And, um, I'm going to put mine on as well. Now, what you have here is a flat picture, uh, and it's flat because both of your eyes are seeing the same thing exactly. You know, it's flat because there is no parallax between the two eyes. We, we evolved as human beings uh, with two eyes instead of one for a very good reason. It obviously gave us a great advantage uh, in survival. And this is brought about by the, the miracle of stereopsis. We have two slightly different pictures of the world presented to our brain every second that we live. Two different views. And the differences between them, the little what we call parallax differences, are interpreted by the equipment inside your head every second that you're alive without us even thinking about it. And what your, your head does is translate this, the tiny little differences into information that gives us depth, perception, solidity, uh, perception. 
And so it's like we are, we are building unconsciously a three-dimensional picture of the world around us the whole time. So now I want to show you, I want to show you the magic of stereopsis, which I hope you enjoy, which we do by correcting the fact that both of your eyes are seeing the same thing on the screen. If I do this, This. So now we're getting stereopsis, and I hope you're on. Thank you for the wow. I love the wow. <laughs> love it. Love it. I'm tempted to keep doing it, but that would be self indulgent. <laughs> so. I don't know if I can do it again. Eric, can I do it again? You should be able to. Let me see. There you go. Oh. Be prepared because. Yay! You just do that all night, right? So you ain't seen nothing yet. That's all I can tell you. Where do I begin? I mean, this is really going to be uh, a picture show. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit, but what I want is for you to become immersed in the pictures that you'll see. This is a wonderful system in this room. It's, it's one of the best that's ever been assembled because these laser projectors are fantastic. Mm. And the people working them are, fa are fantastic. And um, the pictures are pretty good too, I think. <laughs> um, but here's an interesting uh, experiment. If, if you want to just keep your glasses on a minute, but just turn around and see these projectors. Well, actually, take them off for a second and look over. Look at the back of the room. You see these two projectors in the middle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're projecting one picture for the left eye and one picture for the right eye. If you put your spectacles back on now and you close each eye alternately, Oh, wow. I noticed the left eye cannot see anything from the right eye projector, right. and the right eye can't see anything from the other eye. So the, uh -huh. the separation between these two images is just about 100%. Now, you would never find that with any other system. Because that's the case, because of this wonderful system, we can bring the stereo image right out into the room without getting ghosts and without giving anybody headaches. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. So I'm going to kick through, and as I say, you know, well, the other thing I should say is people here, you know, there are people here who I respect hugely. Uh, all the animators from Disney and other uh, people, you know, in the Stereo Club, you know, and I don't want to be kind of giving you too much information. At the same time, there's people here I know who, who are interested but haven't seen much of stereoscopy before, so I hope I tread, tread the fine line between sort of giving too much information and not enough. So forgive me if I tell you things that you know, okay? I'm going to move on straight into this. <laughs> mm. uh, this is where it began for me. <laughs> this is what I found in my cereal packet when I was a kid. When I was about 10 years old. And these little cards, I can actually point with this thing, I believe. Yeah, there you go. You can only see it with one eye, though. Um, I found one of these cards in my cereal packet and thought, huh, oh, what's this? You know, two little pictures that are very flat, you know, not very impressive. What's it all about? But it said, send off one and sixpence and a packet top to get your, your viewer. And I sent off my one and sixpence and a packet top, and this is the viewer I got. Put the card in the viewer, looked through the lenses, and I gasped because suddenly I wasn't looking at two little flat pictures. I was looking through a window at an animal that looked incredibly real, so real that I could walk through and touch it. So that's what started me off. You know, I thought, why, why do people... Uh, why is this not known? Why, why, did, why, did, why isn't everything stereoscopic? So that's where I come from. Uh, this is the picture that I found. This is the hippo. And again, you see this flat, you see the two pictures. But in the viewer, this is what it looked like. And this is a very low quality uh, reproduction that, that I was looking at. You know, it, it's a screen print which was very big. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, it was quite primitive, but nevertheless, the effect is so dramatic. I can do that again, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so flat, 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 and... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't know who this boy is. Wow. Uh, um, this is a very young me. You can see I'm, I'm here at Lulworth Cove in England. And uh, my dad took this picture. My dad was a very decent uh, uh, photographer. And you can see what I have sung around my neck. It's not a guitar, but <laughs> it's not a stereoscopic camera. But looking at these Weedabix cards, I figured out how it was done. I thought, what happens is they take a picture here, then they move the camera here and take another picture. So that's what I did with this little camera, having figured it out. 
And um, this is the camera that I had. It's a Aww. Woolworths camera. Wow. Um, <laughs> tiny little thing, took 127 film. We're talking about roll film here, of course. Mm, this yeah. is way, way, way before digital. Um, <laughs> uh, here we have some more of this, this gear. But now you see on the left hand side the pictures that I took. I took my own Weetabix pictures. Aww. And. Um, and I put them in the view. This is the very first one I took of my dad decorating the ceiling. You can't really see his face very well, but the general effect worked. It actually did work. And what I did was put that little camera on a tabletop, take a picture, slide it on the tabletop in a, you know, a few inches to the right and take another picture. And of course, that's the way it's done. Uh, I then got my dad to take pictures of me with the same tabletop, which you can see here, because we, we haven't quite figured out that uh, this, this camera didn't have a range finder, I didn't, didn't have a viewfinder. Um, and that's the print that I made at the time. I, I restored it recently along with Denis, and uh, the information's there. I actually did a bit of colouring as well, but that's me um, in, in true stereo in my, my mum and dad's back garden. So I figured out, here's my mum, this is with a slightly better camera, I've got a, a, a two and a half square, two and a quarter square camera to, to take these. So I'm, um, I'm driving my parents mad with the stereo pictures of them. Um, so now, yeah, this, is, this is Rog, this is my mate Rog. And we're moving swiftly on. I'm only going to give you little glimpses. The book has a lot more depth and a lot more connection. But I'm jumping here to the very early Queen days. And I think this is the, probably the first stereo picture I ever took of Roger in rehearsals. On Canvey Island, I think, you know, this is prior to the first album when we're putting songs together. Uh, but again, it worked, and I'm going to tell you more about the cameras that I use in a minute. But I was already into stereo at that time. Here's a nice picture of Freddie and John. I just want to introduce you to the band before we move on. <laughs> and here we we're in Trident Studios making that first album. Uh, John is in the front here playing my guitar. I don't know why he was doing that. <laughs> Bloody bass player. <laughs> But behind Freddie, you see um, an analog multi-track. That's an analog 16-track uh, machine there, which is what we used. And we had those things were the latest toys at the time. We had access to amazing stuff. You know, our, I think our, um, our you could say our bibles were the, the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix. Uh, you know, the, the way that they used the studio. Um, but we had better toys. You know, we, things had moved on a little bit. We had more tracks to play with and better outdoor, outboard gear. Um, so here we are starting to make that first album. <laughs> this is not much, you know, it's a very good likeness. <laughs> but uh, can you see okay? I hope I'm not getting in the way. Um, I put this in because this, is a this picture is actually on the reverse yeah. side of the first album cover. And this is kind of, I think I was kind of staking my claim, like I am into stereo and I want people to know. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful little um, doll that was made by a fan and sent to Roger. And it's placed on one of his drums and I took this picture. And the, the two pictures that make up this stereo are right in the middle of the back of that first Queen One album cover. 